Let's talk about linear functions. Over here we have y is equal to x. This is actually a function. So wherever y is, x will be at the same point, but on the x-axis. So let's talk about talk, making a straight line. If you have x is equal to minus 2, you'll have y is equal to minus 2. So let's just establish this quickly. f of x is actually the same as y. So if you have f of x is equal to x, it's the same as saying y is equal to x. Let's, do our, let's draw our straight line. Right over here, we've got a set of axes, and uh, we've drawn our line. So we set over here as our first point, second point, so at minus 2, at minus 2. So you go across minus 2 first, and then you go down minus 2. Then you go across. Over here, you go across minus 1 and down minus 1. Then you go up one and across one. With this said, we actually need to realize that your gradient is reality. So your gradient is m is equal to the change in y over the change in x. This can also be written as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if we started at this point over here, we would actually be going up one and right across. And you go up one and right across. And so it continues. Let's continue down. If we are asked for the domain and range, Domain always comes first, range comes second. It's the same as x comes first and y comes second. So if you get these terms, you know that this is an x and this is a y. So this is the domain itself tells you where the graph will be along the x-axis. What sort of limitations does it have? And the, the, the range is the limitations on the y-axis. So if we look at this and we say from minus 2 to positive 2, in other words, from here all the way up here and onwards, where is x of uh, is x a real number? And yes, it is because x will continue going all the way along here, and y will continue going all the way down there, as well as along there for x and along there for y. So therefore, we say x tends to infinity, negative infinity here, and tends to infinity. As you can see, I've written it over here. Same goes for y. And we then get negative infinity tending to infinity, as we see over here. So if it's symmetrical, we need to know how it is symmetrical. Let's look at this. It says symmetrical is about the y is equal to negative x line. Let's scroll up. This line over here with the red dots is the y is equal to negative x line. That is because if you were to flip this arrowhead across this line over here, it would be this line over here to point in that direction. So hence we know that it is y is equal to negative x that it is reflected upon. So in this case, let's start from this. We've got f of x is equal to 4. That also means that f of 4 is equal to x, because we've just said that y is equal to x above, not over here, but right at the top. So if, if our function is y is equal to x, then f of 4 is equal to 4 essentially means that this is equal to y, and this is equal to y as well, over here. It may seem a bit confusing, but just bear with me. Because y is equal to x, x is y. So when we have function of x is equal to 4, 
we understand that we say y is equal to 4, which is also equal to x. So then we, if, we func if we have a function like this, we've got a function of 4 is equal to 4. It means literally 4 is equal to 4, or y is equal to 4, which is equal to x. It's just very important that you understand that a function of x is actually equal to y. It's the same thing. Now let's calculate where this equation cuts the axes. We can look up and we can see that this function cuts it right over there, which is 0x, 0y. So we put that down there. There's a nice easy answer.